The Navy now has the world's most advanced aircraft carrier just delivered. The USS Gerald Ford cost $12.9 billion. We talked about this with Budget Director Mick Mulvaney. We talked about President Trump's plans for the military within the budget. Roll tape. I think it, it isn't enough to accomplish everything that the president said, but again, it's just the first year we've laid out, a, or in the process of laying out a new strategic plan and how to grow the military in order to conform with the president's promises. You can't do that. It's physically not possible to do that all in one year. Van Hip joins us. He's the chair of American Defense International. Van, I'll get to the aircraft carrier in a second. I want to talk about how big an increase we get in military spending. General Jack Keane, four-star retired general, retired, says <coughs> it's not enough. We need a lot more than the president has budgeted for. What say you? Well, he's probably right. <clears throat> the Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, said that uh, during the Obama uh, uh, administration, so he's probably right. But let me tell you, he won't get what he even is asking for if they don't deal with the, uh, with the current budget caps. Uh, he could actually be presiding over a defense decrease instead of a defense increase if Congress doesn't deal with this budget cap situation with the sequestration. What do we get for $12.9 billion on this new aircraft carrier? Well, there's a reason why the Chinese are going all out to get this kind of capability. An advanced aircraft carrier is what, what really sets us apart uh, from the rest of the world militarily. And so uh, uh, I looked at this, and I looked at these cost issues. This, this aircraft will let us fly like one-third more missions. And actually, in the end, I think it's going to save us money, and I'll tell you why. The technology it's using, and this is a big story, reduces the wear and tear on the aircraft. The yearly cost, what's really costing the taxpayers a fortune, are these uh, uh, operation and maintenance costs, O&M costs, throughout the Defense Department. Uh, for everything I've seen, the O&M cost, once this is operational, will actually come down. That's a good thing for taxpayers long term. However, $2.4 billion overrun on cost on the initial delivery. That's not good. Look at how the president, though, handled the F-135 situation. That was great. If we could, he can't be involved in every one of these cost overrun issues, Stuart. But I've said this before. If we could put the mechanism in place that accomplishes that, you had the OMB director, Mick Mulvaney, on earlier. Yeah. I'd like to see the service secretaries meet with the OMB director every year where they go through things like this before the president's budget is released. I'd like to see contractors incentivized to come in under budget and ahead of schedule. We've got to do things like that to give the taxpayers best value and give our military what they need. Change of subject, Van, because I think this is a very important story. I'm talking about the unmasking of members of President Trump's campaign <clears throat> team. Moments ago, Senator Lindsey Graham said he thinks he was unmasked by the Obama administration. Roll tape. I have reason to believe that a conversation that I had <clears throat> was picked up with some foreign leader or some foreign person, uh, and somebody requested uh, that my conversation be unmasked. I've been told that by people in the intelligence community. Uh, let me explain something here, Van, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, but for our viewers who are not, let me explain it. President Obama, the NSA, captures telephone conversations and text messages from everybody in the country. President Obama made that information more widely available within the intelligence community. Susan Rice and some other members of the administration came along and reportedly asked for the names of people who were in those secret recordings by the NSA. That is unmasking. And now Senator Lindsey Graham says he may have been unmasked. I find this almost proof that President Trump was right, that President Obama was spying on him and the people. This is the big story, Stuart, and I think the House Intelligence Committee may have the smoking gun. Go back to March when Devin Nunes first told us about the possibility that the Obama administration was using this foreign surveillance of foreign targets as a ruse to spy on President Trump uh, and his folks. Go back to that. Don't forget right after that, the NSA delivered a lot of documents to the House Intelligence Committee. And sources there said they thought they were going to find the smoking gun. And now they come out with these carefully narrow, tailored subpoenas. I think they just may have found that uh, smoking gun, and I think they just may identify the culprits who did this. So you think it is now possible that President Obama did indeed spy on us? Oh, I think it's very possible, and also, but also, and not only that, and but how it. about the leaks? How about the leaks? Right, mm -hmm. and use the information, the right? Van Hip, good stuff. Thanks for joining Thank us, you. sir. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.